镜花水月，昨日辉煌，一招称王之人，为何而战？状态起伏，皇冠不朽，为再度登峰造极而战。后发之人，咫尺后勇，逐梦离乡之人，为何而战？狼群散去，但听狮吼，为重回最高舞台而战。前路漫长，多有磨难，久别功名之人，为何而战？不卑不亢，静候良辰。为击溃心中魔障而战，百战千回，盛名难复。初心长远之人，为何而战？漫漫长路，该为学徒，为骑士，永不缺席而战。静如平湖，稳若泰山，最新团队之人，为何而战？不畏声名，不畏强者，为众人齐心至胜而战。金戈铁马。折戟黄沙，享尽荣光之人，为何而战？胜负成败，兵家常事，为无愧满身金甲而战。激情四艳，天赋异禀，心愿未达之人，为何而战？春日遗憾，金秋凤还，为成长成熟成名而战。正值巅峰，心存浩瀚，意气风发之人，为何而战？凤翼天翔。野火燎原，只为那梦中银杯而战。We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Round one has been completed. It's done with a big old surprise. LNG, of course, yesterday taking down IG. And day one of our round one, it was, of course, EDG taking down Sunny. So two teams are gone from the eight. As we start to come into our quarterfinals, BLG find themselves in new territory for 2019 as they set themselves up for a potential playoff run and almost certainly looking towards Worlds as well at the end. But of course, got to think about their opponents as well. The EDGs of the world, the fans, the faithful will be looking for them to continue their legacy of never missing a World Championships. They started off brightly against Suning, but they need to continue it today. It's going to be a very, very interesting game. Hello, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the second round of the playoffs here in the LPL. I am Oshin BP Malloy. I'm joined today by Clement Clement Chu. It's all going to be great. I'm excited. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. This is my first cast on playoffs. This is where the excitement really happens. You know, round one, that was just a taste tester. There's no real points in the round one, but here is where Literally. you see champ. <laughs> yeah, there are no points gathered here. Here is where it starts to matter. Who can rack up those points and find themselves a good footing within Gauntlet? Yeah, we'll have a look now at the playoff bracket as well. As we just mentioned, some of the results in the EG, who we will be seeing today against BLG. But on the other side, I want to talk about yesterday's result, LNG versus IG. Oh, man. Man, what an upset that was. We were all predicting IG would come back in form, but they looked like they just walked out of the series versus Team Liquid at MSI. It was absolutely terrible. They were completely trashed by LNG. And I have to say, this is very disappointing, but IG fans, they still have hope. They still have that 90 points from Spring to make it into Gauntlet. Yeah, they still are guaranteed, but of course, we're going to talk about EDG. It was a slow start. They lost the first game in the series, but then it was just kind of uh, a systematic dismantling of suiting after that. And we got to talk about the man in the top lane, Jinu. He was insane. The solo laners for EDG have been their strength, and congratulations to Jinu for finally proving it in playoffs. This, that was his debut play. He performed tremendously. He dismantled Maple. And in game three, the highlight game of the series, he outdamaged the entire Suning team. 23.9K in the damage, and Suning only got 23.4. So that yeah. was incredible performances on his game plan. And as well as that, like you're looking at this guy, and you see like he just dominated. Like you said, it was Maple, Angel, SMLZ, no one had a chance against this guy. This is pretty much a highlight reel of that game you're just talking about in game three. It was absolutely insane, and this is what we wanted to see from Jinu, a very dominant laner. He was known as a split pusher, played the Riven, played the Aatrox, played the Camille. He has these type of champions in his pool where he's looking to dominate lane, and today's going to be a great test to see if he can do it against another Korean top laner in ADD. We'll have to wait and see, and of course, you just mentioned BLG, of course, we have to talk about them now. New to the playoff scene, their first one in 2019, 
they've kind of come into their own, almost like out of nowhere as the Dark Horse. And like, you know, the likes of Raz, a lot of other analysts, like a lot of players as well, are rating them quite highly. Yeah, they were the second most dominant team in the later half of the split, just behind FPX. A lot of their series went 2-0 in the back half. They came into playoffs as the fourth speed. Was pretty much a breeze. and. They are, in their style, in their style, the most LCK-like team we have in the LPL. They're much more conservative. They play slowly in the early game. They're willing to take losses, not gamble on CS. But when it comes to the late game, they have those scaling picks to then just dominate the game. Kuro himself has played five straight Azir games. So expect that matchup to show up a lot. And when it comes down to how they finish, it's always through those big team fights. Kuro, a great teleporter. Same with ADD. When they collapse on the 1-3-1, one, one, it's magnificent to watch. And of course, we can't talk about BLG without Meteor being within that conversation. Arguably one of the best players left in playoffs, alongside the Doombees and the, and the Knights of the World. And this guy has just been, he's just been literally the, the catalyst of how this team is able to come together. Yes, exactly. BLG, like we were talking about, very slow in the early game, and that makes Meteor's job incredibly important. He has to hold up his solo lanes and make sure they can go and scale on into the later phase of the game. A lot of times he does it with super efficient ganks. He's ahead in farm on average and he's also has one of the highest kill participations and one of the highest kill shares in the entirety of the LPL junglers. And what I love about BLG as well is that it's this beautiful mixture of rookies and veterans. You've got people who've literally been to the World Finals and Meteor, is, as a perfect example, in his rookie split, so or his rookie year, I should say. And like you know, like you said, in these clips, it's just team fighting. It's working as a unit. It's coming together when they need to. Yeah, they all bring it together when it comes to that team fighting phase. And Honestly, I think this is going to be their biggest strength over EDG. If the games go long, over 33 minutes, I expect BLG to win every single one of them. They are far better the initiators, and they're the far better team fights when it comes down to this matchup. And we could say, you know, in a, in a very honest sense, that BLG coming into this would be favorites into this particular matchup. You know, there's a lot of question marks over EDG. They are still legacy, so we kind of it's almost like the IG situation. I'll believe it when it happens, you know? Definitely. EDG, like you were talking about, never missed a World Series, but they did come into the playoff rather rocky. They still are the fifth seed, but their later half of the split really does not compare over to BLG. I will say, however, these two teams, you can't just look at what happened in the regular split. It's about what happened between them, because mm. these this is a war between brothers. BLG and EDG are incredibly familiar with EDG. Each other. BLG was formerly IMA, which was formerly EDG's sister team, and they still are neighbors to this day. They scrim a lot, and whenever we've seen a BLG versus EDG matchup, the pocket picks have gone very, very deep. You have to dig deep to surprise someone that is basically living right next door to you. So we've seen the Zed coming out from Scout, we've seen the Mundo coming in from ADD, a lot of surprises. Yeah, and I'm excited to see exactly how both of these teams kind of shape up. Like you said, the pocket, they know each other like the back of their hand. Yes. You know, it's like, like you said, they're brothers. They know what you're going to do. They know what you're going to look for in these fights. And you would expect both sides to be very, very well prepared coming into this series. And of course, we're going to have the lineups coming in. BLG going to be coming out first. It is going to be ADD, Meteor, Kuro, Jin, Jin Zhao, and, <laughs> excuse me, Zimo. I can't remember. Is it Zimo? Uh, Xingmo. Xingmo. Yeah, Xingmo basically means... Uh, 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 it means kind of like mental darkness, basically okay. saying that you, you have <laughs> oh, this no. kind of thing in, inside your heart where it's it's blocking you. Now, I, I always think these edgy names, they kind of sometimes backfire if you don't perform well. So we hope that this new rookie on the team can live up to his name's hype and create that darkness in the hearts of EDG. Otherwise, it'll be his own heart that'll be going into the darkness as EDG come out the veteran lineup as well. The MVP of the last series, Jinu, with JJ, rookie jungler in the jungle as well. Scout in the mid lane and of course, iBoy and Mako on the bot lane. iBoy having a smile on his face, and we were debating if the MVP should have gone to him because he got a lot of kills, made very little mistakes throughout the entire series, and really rebounded from his regular split performance. We were very worried about iBoy coming into the playoffs, whether he could hold up against Jin Zhao, against, uh, against SMLZ in terms of his consistency, and he passed with flying colors. Yeah, well, as you said, the big key word I want to pick up on your statement there, consistency. Yes. <laughs> he needs to consistently come back in on top of these things, as well as being able to kind of, like, you know, be that rock. Like, we, you know, past iterations for the last few years have just been like every analyst, regardless of who you are, the Frostgurns, the, the Spawns, the Rusties, everyone's always said iBoy is the real deal. 
and we've seen glimpses of him being able to do it, but when it comes to the clutch moments, sometimes he just kind of drops the ball. More spe specifically, we see them dropping the ball in Worlds, but now is now or never, basically, for EDG and for Ivo. Definitely. Really important to see how far he can go. These are the team statistics. We showed a bit of them. I think the most important thing is leads at 15. 64% EDG has that at 15 minutes, while only 37% for BLG. The way I look at this matchup, it is EDG is going to try and go hard early, while BLG looking for the later game. Yeah, and you can see as well the uh, matchup history is going to be pretty, I would say, heavily favored <laughs> with EDG. And you say, like, these guys are no strangers to each other. Yeah, we have to say that EDG, as the older brother, has been the favored side in this relationship. In their last meeting, BLG solo laners went one kill and 21 deaths, while Scout had a perfect game. So EDG, they definitely know the matchups against Kuro and ADD very well. And even though BLG, I would say overall is the better team, EDG have the matchup advantage, especially in the solo lanes. Yeah, as well. And like, I'm, what I'm so excited about is that you've got Kuro versus Scout. Kuro went to the finals of the World Championships with the uh, Ku Tigers at the time. You know, got all the way against SKT. Unfortunately, fell down in, in the Mercedes-Benz Arena in Berlin. But this guy kind of never really kind of came up to that stardom ever again. Scout, unfortunately, has always been hyped up, but never really proven it to be like, you know, a consistent. <laughs> For example, now we look at someone who has won the World Championship in the LPL, Rookie, he's out. So he, he's got an opportunity. Out. He's not completely out, but he's out of the Summer Championships. <laughs> Definitely true. And I think this is Scout's great chance to kind of take down BLG a peg and what we've seen from the matchup is that Scout will go heavily into the assassins and try to punish the safety uh, the safe and slow style that's given up uh, that, that's given by Kuro earlier on we saw the Zed last time when they played and I think another big pick is going to be the Aurelia in this matchup probably one of Scout's best champions now going over to Meteor his role is really to stabilize the early game for the team find those first bloods. So he's going to be very heavy into those champions that can provide the ganks earlier down. Olaf, Gragas are really the two champions that I'm looking for. And just taking a look at his stats, gold lead at 15 minutes, 352. That's almost a kill ahead consistently across all the games. As well, I'm pretty sure that second is literally only to TN. Yep. I'm pretty damn sure that he's second. So, like, seeing your second to TN is never, ever an insult. And like you said, to shore up those early games, to make sure that BLG can kind of come into the 15, 20-minute mark and go, okay, we're not a million miles away from these guys. Definitely. Meteor, for me, has been the best player on BLG. And congratulations on also reaching, uh, reaching the LPL all-team second, uh, the, all, uh, the second team. And looking at iBoy, now what's interesting is the Kaisa pick. This is the big differentiator from between him and uh, Jin Zhao is that he will go for the uh, the Kaisa into kill lanes with the uh, the Leona and with the uh, Volley Bear a lot of the times with Mako. And taking a look at his stats in the previous series, 21, 4, and 18. And look at that gold lead at 15 in the laning phase. 744 gold lead, over two kills ahead. Really, EDG, they still play through the bot lane. That is their bread and butter. Yeah, and it said, like, you know, like I said, for the last series for EDG, it was a slow start. Definitely looked like it was a bit shaky, but we've been talking about it, like, pretty much all week. Is EDG, they're a 3-1 series kind of team. You know, they're the team that they never really 3-0 or go 3-2. It's always been a 3-1. So if they lose a first game or a second game, it's not panic stations. There's always a bit of messiness when it comes to EDG. Now, that could come back and bite them. But we have to keep their strengths in mind. It is going to be their laning phase. It is going to be their early skirmishing. And if they can find those, I actually favor them in a matchup a little. <laughs> well, for both these sides as well, we talked about it's a battle of brothers. And like both of these sides need a minimum of third place to make it into that gauntlet. Minimum. Neither side has points from spring. Neither side has anything to go on for the gauntlet. So right now, one of these teams is out of world's contention. BLG coming off of, again, cannot be underestimated, a six series win streak off the regular split, finally coming into the playoffs, and EDG, that legacy to uphold. Oof, it's really tough for both of these sides, a lot of things that they're fighting for, and it's pretty much like fratricide at this point, going at each other's throats. We're going to take a look at the coaches, both of them uh, Korean coaches. We have Coach Sim, Najin Blackshield, TPA, and then Coach Hart from RNG.
Wow, we are straight into picks and bonds, ladies and gentlemen, for game one of this best of five BLG versus EDG. We can see straight away the solo lanes that you talked about, the Akali, the Kiana, the Jace taken away from Sky. That is pretty much three bands onto that mid lane. Well, on the other side, we see the Gragas, pretty big champion for Meteor and Silas as well, and the Yumi taken away, which means Tam Kench first pick. This is really smart on uh, EDG side. I actually think they win out with the first two picks. BLG are thinking about protecting their bottom lane from the aggression on EDG, and EDG are recognizing, hey, you know what? Our strength in this matchup is not actually in the bottom lane. We're willing to play safe here, go against the grain of the normal EDG, and try to dominate topside. Well, we were expecting deep champion pools, but we weren't expecting the Azir Corky handshake. To anyone who doesn't know what we're saying, it's like Azir and Corky are kind of two champions that never really have kill threat on each other. So you kind of just go, right, we're going to shake hands, we'll farm up to three items, and then we'll see each other in the late game. And the funny thing is this matchup actually only happened once in the LPL regular split. So actually very rare to see both sides just go like, you know what, that's fine. Uh, in this matchup, we do see Azir with the lane priority just a little bit, but later on, the Corky with the 131 potential does triumph over the matchup. So it's a stylistic difference. We see BLG going for a strong bottom lane and then also setting up a potential 131 with the Tom Kench and the Corky. And straight away, we're into second ban phase. Very quick from the starting off point as well. So both sides relatively happy. And like you said, they know each other so well. They're like, all right, we picked this, they picked that, yeah. we picked this. They know exactly what's going on. They're happy with those trades. This is where things kind of get a bit interesting, in my opinion, because now we start to see kind of uh, adaptations and kind of seeing how you feel about the, the matchup at the start. Who do you respect? Who do you want to try and ban out? And it looks like the start for EDG is going to be about getting themselves a solid jungler with a last pick for their top lane. Yeah, I, I like the ban on Nar. It's a champion that ADD has been most known for, and there really isn't a hard part counter against Nar. It's very difficult to punish him in lane, and if EDG are setting up the last pick for Jinnu, it's a good idea to take that away. Also kind of detracts from the 1-3-1 uh, composition that BLG is going for right now. Gangplank has still made its way through, as has the Renekton, and of course the Gangplank is three champions he played in the last series. And earning himself that MVP of the series in his debut playoff series. But see what EDG want to go for. JJ has had a fantastic season on his own as well. Actually, Aatrox completely slipped my mind. It just slipped himself through the picks and bends. Yeah, the Aatrox is something that's, uh, you know, very high priority, can be flexed around. And we're going to see Jinu on it. This is one of Jinu's oldest pocket picks. Played it before multiple reworks. Definitely knows what he's doing here. And what is the answer going to be for BLG? Like, we've actually seen both the Jax and the Poppy being selected by ADD into this matchup to just prevent the uh, the multiple uh, the multiple gap closers that Aatrox has. Ooh, wow! Here we go! I was just about to say that four out of the five champions that Meteor has really shown proficiency on has been banned. And he goes with the Shivana. Already we're getting deep into the pockets. Yeah, we have seen him on this champion just once. And to be honest, this is actually very fitting of his style. He has the highest kill share on the team, which is really ridiculous. But you can't think of Meteor as the normal utility get your uh, get you ahead early game type of juggler. He is a legitimate late game carry on the hands of BLG, and it's not that surprising to see him go for this. Are we going to see AP or AD, Shivana? Uh, <laughs> I, I think we see the, the, the Q one shot, like just like, oh my god, get away from me. <laughs> yeah, I, I think in competitive, you are probably still going to see the, the normal Shivana, where it's more like the Blood Razor. That's fair. Where she just farms up a little bit, but I know in High Challenger, a lot of people are still going for the AP route. Incredibly damaging if you can skill up the E first and have a consistency on those lands. Straight away, you can see poke, poke, and more poke from the side of BLG, but the reactionary kind of, you know, team fight prowess you get from EDG. Two different styles, a tale of two different teams, both fighting for some kind of a way into World's Gauntlet after a very disappointing spring for both of them. I'm very excited to see how this one goes. Overall, for the draft phase, I do favor BLG a bit here. I think EDG, even though they have a good answer in the later game with the Ezreal and Nazir, it's kind of a, a takeaway composition from a BLG rather than playing to their own strengths. I think they're lacking a lot of initiation and engages on this comp, which is typically a big no-no for uh, EDG. On BLG's hand, they have a lot of safe lanes. It's very difficult to take anything out of Corky. It's very difficult to take anything out of Poppy. And for Shiva 
Ivana, even if you steal away her side of the jungle, she has such a fast clear that she can just equalize on, on your own side. And a lot of times she will be able to uh, get ahead just in that farming department. So BLG, they're holding down the late game composition uh, very well. And I think they have avoided a lot of the bad matchups that they could have had in lane. Shivana finding her very first appearance in summer right now. Very curious to see how it will do. I'm sure a lot of solo queue people are just glued to the screen, just like, where did they go? What did she start? But ladies and gentlemen, we are on to the rift for game one of this best of five, BLG versus EDG. I always wonder after like playoffs, like who do they go to? You can't chant for LGD or OMG. They're gone now. They're out. I think it was Fun Plus. <laughs> this actually does look like the AP build coming in from Meteor, but first of all, let's let, let us see the EDG invade. It's 4v2 here. Yeah, oh, BLG have been spotted out here. They will get. That's at least a flash. No? No, Windows Bite is only a little bit of a slow. They can't get the stacks on it. And very powerful start here for EDGs. They're looking to just try and delay Meteor. They see, like we talked about, the kind of situation where BLG, they want Meteor to be that early game kind of, you know, band-aid, if you like, to kind of make sure they don't fall too far behind. But a good sweeper actually gets out most of the vision. It looks like Meteor is going to be pretty unprotrude. But JJ, he wants that red buff. He's definitely going for it right now. We're seeing the Predator onto uh, onto the Trundle, something that I believe SOFM did play earlier on. Gives him a lot better ganking opportunity. And in this matchup, he will need it. It's not, a, it's, a, Trundle's actually a pretty slow farmer most of the time. Good mm. thing Meteor doesn't face check into that one. Still though, they know exactly where Meteor has gone. They are not quite sure exactly where the Trundle is. So can I get a fairly decent guess as where he's gone back up to his blue, but so far, you could say arguably advantage to the EDG. And uh, I wanted to talk to you as well, just purely because we have got ADD versus Jinu, two top laners who are coming into a fantastic end of split, really coming into their own. And I want to know how this kind of poppy Aatrox matchup goes up in your mind. Well, the way I see it, a lot of times it is about, uh, it, it's, it's a pretty safe lane on both sides of this. Uh, because the Aatrox has a very difficult time actually initiating on it. With Steadfast Presence, you can slow the Aatrox, you can ground the Aatrox, makes him very susceptible to ganks because he can't flash afterwards. So there's a, a tremendous amount of risk for Jinu to go in into that matchup. And I'm actually a little bit surprised that we see uh, EDG hold on to the jungler pick instead of uh, the pick for Jinu in the top side. See so now JJ and Meteor are gonna find themselves in the jungle together. No buff yet for the BLG jungler. And realistically, the Shivana's not going to have a fantastic time against the Trundle. You know, it isn't, isn't a hard counter, but definitely in the early game skirmishes, the Shivana just kind of lacks that agency. And see if JJ doesn't feel like he can take the blue buff just yet, though. Yeah, definitely not early on. You can't really contest with the, uh, the Trundle. Now, you actually have 80 ratios on the burnout. So the Trundle takes away that just with the Chomp as well. It's not a... Not a very fun matchup overall, but looking at Meteor's build, it should actually go towards the the AP style. Usually, if you're going for the uh, the AD, uh, the attack speed style, it does uh, take press the attack, or you, you see a lethal temple sometimes. So it looks it like it will be the Wizard Dragon. The Wizard Dragon. We'll have to wait and see. I'll be very curious to see how that particular build goes. But right now, both sides just kind of feeling each other out. And with the Shivana having going bot side for that Scuttle, will lose her blue wolf. And actually, Scout going to be the one to pick this one up. So good early aggression here from EDG. Yeah, I think EDG is making maximum use of the early priority in the Azir versus Corky matchup. They've taken away both buffs at this point. This is going to continue to push. And Shivana is a champion that desperately needs farm. She is not a champion that does well from behind because she just runs at you. There's always something I've noticed as well when we get to the kind of the Shivanas and solo queue and stuff like that. The pure amount of emphasis that people put onto those dragons. And I might have to hold my point as ADD just oh. get caught up. They do get the pillar of filled up. There's a flash in. First blood goes over to Jinu. And EDG start off right. 
Yeah, that was so well played on Jinu's side. He holds down on the gap closer and forces ADD to use Steadfast Presence just to get the extra movement speed. Nothing much he could do. He still gets the pullback, and they get the kill. As I was saying, back into the solo queue mentality, as I do, okay. as I see Meteor coming over for that very, very first dragon, which uh, they'll be happy with. You only get five armor and magic resistance for it in terms of actual extra stats. Yet yeah, people in solo queue will go crazy. It's like, even if they get six <laughs> dragons, that is 30 like armor and magic resistance. That's not a lot. As we have a look exactly how this perfect gant went for EDG. Yeah, ADD held on to the flash for a while. So he flashed after the pullback. A little too late for that. And, uh, you know, does give over the first blood for Jinu. Jinu also holds on to his own flash. So that's something that he can use to get within the steadfast presence. Straight away, we see the Anti-healing coming in here, the makings of a thorn mill, and the Bramble Vest picked up here for ADD. Just respecting the Aatrox matchup, and Aatrox is one of those champions. I've seen him in multiple kind of, you know, regions where I'm like, this man needs a nerf. <laughs> 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 he falls under my kind of, you know, the similar to Silas, you know, the ridiculous amounts of regen during team fights. That's where I put him. If you've been checking OPGG, has the highest play rate in Challenger, KR, and I believe in competitive as well. It's just one of the top picks we have right now. And uh, even though he's like Riven 2.0, he's a better Riven 2.0. He's literally a better <laughs> Riven because he has more sustain and a far better, uh, you know, kind of escape mechanism is just run. Okay. <laughs> Talking about the builds a little, the reason I was predicting that uh, they would get a flash out of uh, Tom Kench earlier on is typically you see the problem with the exhaust, but this time EDG going for a much more defensive bottom lane. Uh, they're definitely thinking about the potential for the Vars ultimate here, so they're trying to keep their options alive. We've seen Meteor Ooh. being tracked by Mako, and so far BLG have had pretty much full you know, information, if you like, as to where the BLG jungler has gone. So EDG going to be pretty happy with that. You can see multiple times JJ just invading in, making sure that he knows exactly what's going on. As Jinu just kind of stamping his authority on this top side. It's not too bad for the Poppy to CS under turret. Uh, should be able to pick up pretty much all of that CS. But so far, we're seeing EDG just kind of slowly eke forward. And funny enough, this is Meteor's first buff. <laughs> It's a bit sad, it's seven and a half minutes. Yeah, he's uh, about three camps behind at this point. Oh, this is really nice from uh, Kuril, pulling the camp out to make sure Scout couldn't take anything away from it. Oh, good help out from the mid laner there. Yeah, see exactly where they want to kind of go for this one here, as we know that both teams relatively, you know, safe, if you like, bot lane. Ooh, good flash there from iBoy, dodging out the chains of corruption. We'll take another piercing arrow, though, on the way out. As I said, it's very pretty safe for them to kind of, you know, boat bot side, top lane, jungle. You know, everywhere is pretty safe until we start, you know, fighting over these objectives. I'm so surprised iBoy flashed for that. That's very unlike iBoy, <laughs> if I'm absolutely honest. Like, uh, seeing that flash basically tells me iBoy was pretty worried that Shivana would be there as well. If you get hit by that stun and Shivana just comes in with the Dragon's Rage, you could just die on the spot. <laughs> You see the BLG bot laner is actually having a lot of priority in this bot lane, burning three summoners effectively to teleport used as well. We see Scout is going to force Koro to use the package. Does not want to get hit underneath the turret. Should have been fine either way, but you can see Scout just testing his metal. And now Meteor is here, has got the ultimate, will use it straight away. And you're right, it is the AP build coming out here for BLG. Ooh. And iBoy gets chunked. You got to be very careful of Flame Breath. We talked about it, but seeing it in game, it just reminds me of just how damn toxic and disgusting it is. Yeah, it does a. I wanted to swear there, but it does a lot of damage. <laughs> and I'm proud of you for using your broadcast etiquette. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I really needed that. Uh, <laughs> good thing about Meteor, he did fish for the Predator, uh, for the uh, Dark Harvest deck. Does get it underneath the tower. The longer this game goes, a lot more priority is going to be put onto this Shivana and how and when she's able to ult onto the backside. If she's able to get a huge chunk with those Dark Harvests, could be detrimental to the side of EDG. As we see ADD and Jidu now going at each other, it should be a relatively equal trade. As I say that, the Azir has got priority in that mid lane, so ADD is going to play safe, does not want to try and fight for that one. However, does want to fight for the Scuttle. This could be a little bit of a skirmish. The Tunnel is nowhere really to be found, so this is going to be an interesting one to try and secure. Meteor just trying to come in on top of it, will not be able to secure that, and they all back away. 
A good front from EDG. They were actually missing a member in the jungler there, but uh, know that they can still use that timing when BLG are looking to secure their own blue buff to make the maximum use out of it. A very efficient play on their part. And talking about this Shivana just a little bit more, her build is very offensive. <laughs> she goes for uh, AP items, uh, like two or three AP items, just to keep up the, the burn damage. And the reason we've seen the AP Shivana in the top side, but not in the jungle, is because the jungler doesn't have the economy to support you playing say, the front line either. I was going to say, it's pretty damn expensive. Yes, like. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a very expensive build. A lot of times you have to go Zhonya's, or we see people either going for like the Morellos or uh, Rylai's with a bit of HP in the uh, uh, tied together with the AP items. So you don't really see it in competitive that much because it is a risky build where you have to be ahead to make use of it. We're going to see the Mountain Drake spawning, and these are actually pretty good Drake RNGs for BLG. They've got the priority in the bot side. You're going to see the wave being pushed up, teleport being burned here by iBoy as well, as EDG realize they need to not give over this dragon, not because of the Shivana, but just because of the scaling implications, because Shivana, one of the cool things about her passive is that she takes these dragons really damn quickly, so you got to be in position for them as I say that. Going to be the Tam Kench Devourer used, and they're going to be able to trade back a little bit, but there's a TV coming in as well. It's going to be the Varus who comes in on top of that. They do use the Shivana ultimate on top of Mako, and there's so much burst damage. He's going to be forced to use the Glacial Fisher, but they could just keep pushing this one down and force his flash out of him. That's good work here from BLG, and they should own this dragon now. As I say that, ADD now looking to try and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jinu, and they're going to boat back away. I like the itemization from ADD. It's purely, I want to deal with the Aatrox, and as I say that, though, we're going to see the TV coming straight back in. Chain of Corruption lands and they're gonna be able to blow up eye boy blg just that little bit crisper than edg but edg are not willing to give up this dragon without a fight they're looking to try and poke out with the azir soldiers the dragon will reset there's the heal used as well they are just going to try and push this one as far as they possibly can they're waiting for the tp for jinu to come back up they're trying to just go for this one JJ is going to have to have a pretty damn good smite slash. steal, okay. but not going to go for it. Do not want to waste any more summoners. Overall, BLG come out with the dragon and the kill. That was an insane prediction from Jin Zhao. Through the brush, the ward was actually placed later and still able to land that chain of corruption. Instantly takes down the damage dealers from EDG. And this is the thing I was talking about about EDG's composition is I don't think they actually do that well when they don't have clear initiations on the team. Their only real hope of getting anyone is Scout doing a Shurima shuffle into the uh, into the main line of BLG. That doesn't seem very practical. And I love how BLG played that one out. They actually stopped for a while, let the Drake regen, and made sure that there was no steal coming in. They had the HP advantage, they had the heal advantage there, and they repositioned themselves slowed it down, and found themselves a much better footing. Overall, BLG not going to be too upset with their early game. We talked about how their early game was kind of the, the little missteps as such, but right now they are showing that one, one up very nicely. They've swapped now their duo lane up towards that top side as Rift Herald becomes the priority. Jinu is now towards that one as well. We might actually see another fight coming in. ADD does have his teleport, but there is no real vision here for the side of BLG. They may just have to give this one up, but it does take a very long time to take down this Rift Herald. Yeah, Kuro is not here, but I think BLG will be happy to just take away the farm leads. This oh. is a full five-man stack from EDG. It will be a 5v5 potential. There is the Chains of Corruption going out. It's going to be on top of Mako, who is a good Unbreakable to soak up a lot of that damage. JJ gets jumped on, but ADD forced to flash away off the back side of that. They will use Meteor on his ultimate as well. Now the poke can come in. That's oh. a fantastic package there from Kuro to separate the fight, but it's also separated the side of BLG. They will, however, get the Q off there as Jino trying to go in, but oh, Scout no gets mana. knocked back! Got no mana and a fantastic heroic charge there from ADD. Keeps him from getting the shuffle. It ends up being two kills going over to BLG, but the Rift Herald did go over to EDG. Yeah, and that was such a good front by BLG. E uh, they were actually slow on the play with Kuro coming in, so EDG had a chance to initiate, but BLG acted perfectly right there. They sold that team fight so well. EDG backed off, and throughout the ramp play, three people Running together into the dragon's breath, coming in from uh, coming in from meteor was just the end of that fight. That damage on the Shivana is so deadly when you can get her in range form and she doesn't have to frontline. 
Have another look at how this fight goes. You can see the TP, like you said, very, very late, but there's just so much oppressive poke damage coming out from L uh, BLG. Yeah, this was a really good front coming in from BLG. This is a fight where EDG actually should have started right out off the bat. They didn't know where Kuro was, so very good communication. And he gets a four-man knockback going up the ramp. Now, this looks really dicey, but just watch that damage. Burning down Mako before he can do anything. And Scout, he just doesn't have the mana to use his ability. He dies with... The Emperor's Divide in hand. I think, oh. had, I think he had about 80 mana. Just misjudged that, unfortunately. 100 mana, of course, for the Emperor's Divide, as with pretty much every ultimate in the game. But you see now, Jinu. I'm gonna try and farm underneath this turret. Should be pretty easy for him to pick up most of this, if not all of it. And they are looking to see if they can just pressure down this bot lane turret. And we talk about it a lot in the, you know, kind of in the general scope of the game, especially for BLG, cracking open that first tower in the mid lane. As I say that though, Jinu has to pop the world ender and the flash, but you are being chased by a dragon and a man on a small helicopter. And you're gonna have to get that kill straight away over to BLG. They will trade themselves tower for tower, but a kill and the pressure so far in favor of BLG. The problem here for EDG is there's just no way that can, they can take this one down. Uh, I don't think, I think if ADD is willing to just go up and try to defend for it, he has the HP bars to, to really make a good team fighter to deny them for a long time. Yeah, it looks like he's just going to go for it there. It's a Glacial Fisher as well. The rest of BLG are now looking for this. They have not got the ultimate there for Meteor, but they have got Kuro sleeping himself up to the side of this one, sleeking in. They're going to force iBoy's Flash out of him. They get another summoner for the trouble, but a lot of damage on that top lane tier two. While Jin Ao is just pushing into this boss side. Yeah, I don't think that was a great idea coming in from EDG. It's impossible to take a tower with Poppy and with the ultimate there. So they lose massively on tempo, get their bottom lane tower chunked down. And that was essentially a two for one trade coming in BLG's favor. Yeah, you can see this there in the replay in your picture in picture. Not really much you can do there, unfortunately and uh, does end up losing his life. So all of a sudden we're seeing the gold lead finally in favor of BLG. They got themselves 2K in the lead. Dragon gonna be spawning now in just a second. And it's all BLG all the time. And these Dragon RNGs are pretty damn good. Double Infernal on a mountain on top, you'll take those. We talked about the scaling element for BLG and this is right up their alley. Also, the third stack for Meteor, 15 armor and 15 magic resist, is going to make up for that lack of frontline ability that we were talking about that prevents the Shivana from showing up in competitive. There's a lot of damage, a lot of poke damage from the side of BLG, and it's up to EDG to really kind of find an answer with this composition that they have built. But like you said, they're kind of, unless they get a Shurima Shuffle, they don't really have any kind of hard engage as such. And, the poke war kind of belongs to BLG. They're the ones that are going to be able to win out every single time as they're looking to try and just take down this tier two in the bot side. And overall, I think BLG just ahead of the play every single time. Scout does equalize on the top side, and I think this is a good idea from EDG. They're looking at their late game options right now. They know the early game has not gone well for them. Five for one right now. They're going to have to match Corky and the damage coming from Shivana just with Scout. So they're having him on split push duty. It's pretty much switching to plan B. BLG now looking for their next move. Baron not even spawning yet. Still a minute or so away from that objective. Three and a half minutes or just a little over four. The next Infernal, Triple Infernal, going to be spawning here as well. If you're EDG, I don't think you can let, really let that one go because not only are you giving away, like we talked about, the, uh, the armor and magic resistance to this AP Shivana, but you're also giving the AP Shivana percentage ability power as well. So oh she's boy. just going to be massive. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough one for EDG. I'm trying to think how they should position themselves. It, it looks like the way they want to do it is actually try and get to the scene first because without any initiation options and really not enough of a, I, I would say, iBoy doesn't do enough damage just to poke BLG off the objective at this point. EDG are going to have to look to get into River somehow, but look at all that vision already being set up by BLG. They know this is going to be the next breakpoint on the map. Yeah, you can see BLG just lining the river up with as much as they possibly can. Scout going to use his soldiers to make sure that he's not walking into any kind of traps as such and then defend this top lane tower. So you can see where the kind of the emphasis was for both sides. EDG had advantages on the top side, and that is 50% of Scout's HP from one Q, one flame breath. 
You that's... remember how Meteor started this game with no buffs? Yeah. Until the second <laughs> rotation. And JJ, now JJ's just... feeling it right now. JJ's just like, uh, sorry about those buff steals, bro. Yeah, no hard feelings. <laughs> <laughs> we still friends, right? We still we, Gucci. We good. We good, right? Are we cool? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, this is just the power of Shivana and how much you can farm up. It's like she started terribly. Three camps behind JJ, getting buff steeled constantly. And at this point, still has the items to go forward. For EDG, we talked about this as well you know, in the pregame. It's it's not panic stations just yet. We always know that EDG, you know, for some reason or another, they just like a four-game series. That's it, just how they are. It does seem like EDG do try to test out the waters with game one and try to find themselves in the matchup. I'm a little bit surprised they need to do this against the likes of BLG, but, uh, you know, maybe BLG has been holding their cards very close to the chest and EDG has not really figured out uh, the correct placements to be. EDG this time, their draft, I, I really think it doesn't play to their own strength. It it's more about denying BLG and what they do well, taking away the Azir, taking away the Ezreal. Those are probably the two best champions we were talking about in BLG's team strengths. And let's take stock as well of a couple of items. We're a minute away from the Infernal Drake, which is most likely going to be the next objective, or that or the Baron, one of the big kind of, you know, neutrals on the map and let's have a look at kind of some of the items that we see ourselves picked up we've now got a two item corky with the essence reaver and the triforce sork shoes as well just for that extra little bit of oomph in that build you've got the two and a half items there onto your varus as well with the on hits with the gwinzus the blade of the rune king and of course the zeal but on the other side you're not looking terrible you've nearly got yourselves a um you know a, uh, a lasagnas for your azir so there's a lot of safety in that there's four stopwatches on everyone on the side of edg so i think they realize that the next fight they kind of have to win it yeah it does look like edg understand that what they need is initiation potential stopwatches on everyone on the front line basically i do expect scout to go very heavily into the uh, enemy composition and edg they even though they don't have the hardest of initiations they can poke and try to catch you down with Ivoy on that Iceborne Gauntlet. So BLG already setting themselves up. They're not splitting up. They're not giving EDG any chances to hunt them down one by one. And EDG, they're going to have to try and force this, I feel, but I don't think there's really much place for them to go. They haven't got a footing in this Dragon Pit, and that's going to be Triple Infernal going over to BLG. That's four dragons on top of them as well. As we see, they're kind of jumping on top of this. Scout gets chunked. There's a Chain of Corruption as well. As Mako gets chunked out quite heavily, they are nearly going to be able to take him out. A heal going to be unit. Boy gets chunked down to about a third. And BLG are hunting. BLG smell blood. Oh. GLG flash. They do not get it. Flash is being burned left, right, and center. But EDG are very firmly on the retreat as ADG goes straight onto Jinu. Not exactly the person you want to be able to take down. But overall, it is going to be BLG taking the fights and taking the dragons. Oh my lord. 70% of iBoy's HP with a single ability. That's what happens when uh, Shivana gets, uh, gets going, you know? Not contested on the Drakes that much is able to farm back up with her deficit in the early game. Absolutely terrifying performances. Y you don't see Shivana's this fed earlier on. Uh, you know, she's not a great ganker, so a lot of junglers will be able to kind of make up that difference by keeping their lanes ahead. But when she does get going, boy, is she scary. That's my scuttle. And I will, <laughs> I will, I will use my Keeper's Verdict to get that scuttle. I was ADD making a statement. <laughs> and now, right now, you're, you're staring down the, the barrel of a triple infernal poke comp. You don't really have much sustain, if any at all, on your side. Like, you're still waiting for a lot of these items to kind of come in. And, you know, it, it's, it's not really something that you would expect from the CDG side. They're kind of just being outdone at every turn by BLG. Laning phase, they didn't get enough of a lead, and... The Drakes just got from bad to worse. <laughs> Give up on the first one. He's getting a kill on the top side. It's, it's just the fact that I, I don't think EDG did anything with their laning phase to stretch out their strengths. That's, that's just the problem here. BLG, oh my good god. And we might see a fight just coming straight away from that one little piece of action as BLG just have so much at their disposal. BLG looking to try and take down anyone they can. 
EDG burn almost all their stopwatches and only lose one, but they're most likely going to lose the Baron as well. EDG's carries were not able to stay in the fight whatsoever. Meteor just shot his uh, shot his E into the back line. Everyone had to back out to give up the tower, and this is looking like a cakewalk for BLG. Baron goes down. You're looking down at 5,000, 5,500 gold lead for BLG, and like you said, once that once that you know meteor dragon form comes out, it's like a meteor as it hits you because it just destroys them. Just watch Ivoy right here. He dodges out on the first one, but here we go. <laughs> My God. We got to see how many stacks that Dark Harvest uh, is going on a meteor right now, and this looks like multiple equalizers, even though there's not a rumble on the field. <laughs> A lot of, lot of AoE, a lot of poke, just a lot of damage overall. And now you've given the team that has the poke and has the siege a Baron buff. So then their poke and their siege is going to be that little bit more annoying. I really don't see a comeback from EDG at this point. Not for this game. Of course, best of five series is never, never an indication or sometimes isn't an indication as to how a series will go based on the first game. But BLG... Maybe you've now found something that EDG just aren't prepared for, aren't willing to deal with, which is the Shivana. Does it mean that we see in future games a, you know, a, a ban coming out for it or even just a straight denial? Do they look for it themselves? We've seen that a couple of times throughout the, you know, the world leagues. It's going to be interesting to see exactly how, the re what the reaction is for EDG later on this series. No, I, I really am liking this Shivana. It feels very strong and very similar to what a Karthus would do for you on a composition. Healthy early, farms up to be this great orbital cannon. And uh, EDG are finding themselves hard pressed. The, the key member here has to be Scout because he has to deal with the initiations and the, uh, and the damage at the same time here. It's just been a systematic kind of, you know, death of a thousand cuts here for the side of EDG. And they haven't given away that many deaths, only six kills for, in favor of BLG, but They've only gotten the one objective, which was that Rift Herald and then a couple of towers. And overall, that's just not enough to really deal with this. As we see, TP going to be used in towards that bot side just to reset. And they crack open the base. There's just nothing the side of EDG can do. They're getting attacked on all three lanes. 50% of the HP with two abilities coming in from BLG. This is going to look like a quick and painless death. Uh, I don't really even see EDG getting an initiation. And they get themselves two inhibitors, two inhibitor turrets as well. Last one in their sights. They still have a minute on that Baron buff if they so choose to go for it. But they're going to be used there. ADD It's just too tanky at this stage now. He's got so much armor that it's just nigh impossible for ADD to really get kind of any initiation or any damage down that will stick. The only reason BLG are backing off is to get that rage meter on Meteor back up. They just need that dragon form and they're ready to go. They smell blood in the water. They know they ha They don't need to go anywhere. It doesn't matter about how much item is, uh, how much gold is sitting in your pockets. You can end this now. Yeah, we see Mako actually gets baited out there just to try and put out his unbreakable. And we can see ADD just escorting minions into that mid lane. The top lane inhibitor will fall. There's the Chains of Corruption going to delete the Braum. Redemption comes down as well. So that means everybody on the side of BLG is so healthy. There's just too much damage. There's just not enough time. And overall, BLG are going to be able to take down this inhibitor. That's There's going to be triple, coming. triple inhib. And they may look just for the end right now. Or not. All right. Still play relatively safe in that one. But again, they, I think at this particular moment in time, EDG are, they're thinking about the next game. They're thinking about the next series, or that's the next series, the next, uh, you know, game two, coming into it. How do they come back into this one? And I'm curious to say, like, you know, this particular game, we didn't really see much proactive plays coming out from EDG, apart from that early level one invade. Yeah, the problem for me is I, I think EDG are actually pretty terrible red side drafters. Uh, think about the sequencing of their picks. They actually revealed all three of their lanes on the red side, which is not really what you want to do if you're the lane dominant and early game focused team here. So I, I really want to see them switch up and just play for laning matchups rather than trying to take away what BLG is known for. 
BLG, they have clearly proven this game that they have deep pockets lined with champions, and they're perfectly able to go into similar team compositions with different picks. It doesn't matter if you take away just the Azir and the Ezreal. BLG can still play their style. The two and a half minutes of just double super minions in all three lanes, and you can see BLG going in for the kill. Jinu, even with, oh my god, Ivo is getting half helted by the Corky at this stage, and they're looking for the go sign right now. Trying to find an angle, Meteor will not be able to get it, Banshee's Veil going to be popped there. And EDG, you fight now or you fight never. There's a chain of corruption popping out as the rest of BLG just keep them at bay using the Corky's package to just make sure they cannot advance. The reset on the Nexus turrets with the redemption. And this is going to be the final fight coming in. They do get a Shurima Shuffle, but Scout has no more anything to really give to this fight. They're going to be able to pick up the rest of this team. They will maybe be able to get a kill off the back of that. Never mind. ADD is just too down tanky. And Mako is just going to be the final person. Clean ace the game. 12 to 1, 11 to 2, 10,000 gold, 5 dragons. And that is as clean cut as you like it for BLG in game 1. The younger brother finds their footing in this matchup. They take down EDG with ease. There was no hiccups whatsoever. Only that one first blood going over to EDG. And BLG really make it look easy. They, they definitely understand how to play against EDG. They, uh, they follow through on their style the entire way. And they even threw a couple of, uh, of surprises for EDG. I think the strong picks in the bot lane were something that maybe EDG didn't expect to come, uh, didn't expect to uh, show up. And blowing three summoners earlier on in the lane really set the tone for that Drake dominance. And you can see as well, EDG came into that pick and bang kind of saying, you know what, we're going to give ourselves strong, you know, laning phase and then a safe, like, you know, kind of bot lane. That's not going to really dominate as such. And then PLG kind of flipped it and went, okay, we'll take a strong bot lane and a strong jungler and we'll just out DPS you from that moment on. Yeah, it was uh, really well done on BLG's side. They found the matchup precisely where they needed it to be, while EDG really gave away their own strengths to try and take away from BLG. That's my, that's, my, that's my read on EDG's draft right here. If you think about the previous ways that they've been able to beat BLG, it has been with these super offensive, super aggro early game picks. Talk about Scout on the Zed just going haywire onto the composition. So I want to see a bit more of that stuff uh, going on. I still think ADG has a great chance to be on the red side. I would like to see them utilize their counter picks a little bit more and try to go all in on the laning phase because you are not taking away from that BLG late game. Absolutely. And I want to kind of give major props to Meteor in this game as well, because not only did he whip out the random Shivana AP, but he was heavily hindered in that early game. Didn't get a buff until about seven and a half minutes, yet still was able to kind of slow it down, bring it all back down to earth. And I think for EDG, if you're going to go for that kind of aggressive start, you need to follow it up, constantly putting pressure on the Shivana. Otherwise, there's no real reason to it. The great thing about Meteor's play calling for me is he realized how strong his bottom lane was and made the early game about the Drake fights. Once it was on the Drake fights because of EDG, how far they're behind on iBoy, they couldn't contest that. And everything that happened before the first Drake basically vanished for EDG. You had no leads there and they were able to snowball off of that. So very smart in pulling EDG towards the objectives and making it less about the laning phase. All right, we'll have to wait and see how EDG adapt in this best of five series. We're going to go to a quick break, but when we return, we will bring you game two.